the Galilean transformation for the electric field for observers on Earth, remember, is based on or can be found by the measurements made on the rocket ship of the electric field and the measurements made by the rocket ship of the magnetic field. Now, one thing to know is we do not know the velocity of Earth relative to the rocket ship. Well, actually we do, because when we apply the Galilean transformation equation, remember we have the velocity of the rocket relative to Earth. Now, we can get the velocity of Earth relative to the rocket by reversing the subscripts and putting a minus sign in front. So what this means is that the velocity of Earth relative to the rocket ship is minus the velocity of the rocket ship relative to Earth. And this is just equal to minus the speed of the rocket ship I had. And remember, the electric field measured by the rocket ship has a magnitude E that is in the positive Z axis. And the magnetic field measured by the rocket ship has a magnitude B in the positive Y direction. So now we have everything we need to solve this problem. We could say that the electric field as measured by Earth is given by the electric field of the rocket ship, which we said is E k hat, plus the cross product of, and I'll just put this minus sign here, this is the cross product of the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector. So the electric field is equal to the magnitude of the electric field k hat minus the product of the speed of the rocket ship, the magnetic field measured by the rocket ship, and the cross product of the i hat and j hat unit vectors. Now we could apply the right hand rule to find the the direction of the cross product of i hat and j hat and you might remember that that is going to be just k hat and i am going to um, use what i know to be the magnitude of the cross product of two vectors to find i hat cross j hat well you might remember that the cross product of the i-hat unit vector and the j-hat unit vector is equal to the k-hat unit vector. So in other words, a vector along the x-axis crossed with the vector along the y-axis gives us a vector along the z-axis. And the right-hand rule could tell us this. If we put our fingers in the direction of i-hat, curl towards j-hat, our thumb points in k-hat. So I know that i-hat cross j-hat is equal to k-hat. So what that means is that the electric field measured by Earth is given by the electric field magnitude measured by the rocket ship minus the product of the velocity or the speed of the rocket ship and the magnetic field measured by the rocket ship, k-hat. So this now is just E, the electric field magnitude measured by the rocket ship, minus the product of the speed of the rocket ship and the magnetic field measured by the rocket ship, k hat. So this will tell us the electric field measured by observers on Earth. And notice that this electric field measured by observers on Earth 
isn't going to be the same electric field as measured by observers in the rocket ship because it's influenced by the fact that there is a magnetic field. Now, the observers on Earth may or may not see that magnetic field. Well, in fact, they will because of the Galilean transformation for magnetic fields. The point is, this electric field is different because of the fact that observers in the rocket ship have established an electric field and a magnetic field. So let's go ahead and figure out what this value is going to be. So we have the electric field measured by observers on Earth is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the 6 volts per meter minus the speed of the rocket ship, which is 2.0 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, multiplied to the magnetic field measured by the rocket ship, which is just 1.0 Tesla. This is in the Z direction. And when we apply the math here, and this is going to be very simple, we have a volt per meter for the electric field and a Tesla meter per second, which ends up being the units of volt per meter. We end up with minus 1.0 times 10 to the 6 volts per meter in the negative z direction as the electric field measured by observers on Earth. And notice this electric field actually for this problem coincidentally has the same magnitude as the electric field as measured by observers in the rocket ship. But this is something pretty interesting. The electric field is in the opposite direction. Here, the electric field is in the negative z direction, whereas when we look at what we were given, the electric field for the scientists on the ship is in the positive z direction. So that's very interesting, whereas the scientists measure the electric field to be in one direction, the, the observers on Earth measure the electric field to be in the opposite direction. Now let's turn our attention to the magnetic field. 